Hello everybody, welcome back to the Speakeasy. I'm Zach. I'm Jake. Mayor of the Dirt Road Man. We have Death Seth in the studio. He don't feel like saying hi, I guess. What, are you saying something about me? Yeah. You're here, say hello. Hey, guys, that was dark. It's funny because they're going to see the videos like so several weeks apart from each other. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, what was a joke? <laughs> Yeah, I think they'll see the joke after they see him apologizing for the joke. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys get enough, as much of a kick out of it as we did. Anyway, we're here for a cigar review of Grey Cliff 30th Anniversary, or no, 30 Year Vintage Cigar. Um, we've never reviewed a Grey Cliff before, so uh. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the story of it because there's a lot. Great Cliff Cigars was founded by the Garzaroli family, which definitely sounds like a mob family, but supposedly it's not. Uh, they own the Great Cliff Hotel and Restaurant, which is a hotel in the Bahamas basically known for luxury in general. Luxury food, luxury wine, and so they started to make their own luxury cigars. Makes sense. If it's the mold. Uh, their factory, of course, is also in the Bahamas. And they've done a pretty decent job positioning themselves as a, as a luxury brand. And they've gotten pretty decent demand to go with that. This, this company, if you read any of their marketing on their own websites, sounds like sounds like Trump cigars basically they're they're the greatest ever they have their own traditions that uh, they're expert only elite hand rollers do in their factory with only the best and rarest of leaves now I will admit while we've had this wrapper before which is an African Cameroon wrapper we've never had any cigar that had any part of itself aged for 30 years so that's, that's older than we are. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's been a lot of time aging this. Now, it's... Okay, I said that already. So they also have a three-country uh, blend of long filler from Nicaragua, uh, the Dominican Republic, and Honduras for the fillers and the wrapper is a San Andreas wrapper which we've encountered in uh, the Rocky Patel San Andreas I think we've encountered it somewhere else I can't remember well but that one is PlayStation known for that yes thank you yes we encountered it on PlayStation 2 <laughs> but uh, that's kind of the whole story of Grey Glyph and this cigar in the Cliff Notes version it literally would have taken me like a couple sheets of notebook paper to write it the way they wrote it on their site. But nonetheless, this is supposed to be like a super luxury scar brand. These are like 13, 14 bucks a stick. Uh, it's kind of high so far. I didn't pay that for them. I paid definitely less than 10. So, if you can get a deal on him, do that. I think his is canoeing quite a bit, mostly because he decided to play with the torch a little bit while he was lighting it. Uh, and it's burning very evenly. Out the other side with the torch. We'll figure it out when we do the back half. Okay. So, um, what do you think of it so far? It's good. It's got a... Nice tight draw, but not too tight. It's, um, just feeling it, you feel the. There's no real soft spots in it. It. Be a good uh, ten dollar cigar. Yeah, I uh, so far am pretty unimpressed with it. Yeah. I'm getting some like light <clears throat> walnuts maybe, and. Uh, Kind of an earthy flavor to it, which goes with walnuts. Maybe a little bit of like leather. But 
I'm just not real impressed with what I'm getting here. So far, if they were the same price, and I saw this sitting next to a uh, uh, Camacho Ecuador's, mm -hmm. probably gonna pick the Ecuador. Yeah. You would pick Camacho over most things, though, but I understand what you mean. I compared it to the Prince Auto based on its marketing, based on everything else. I expected it to punch like a Prince Auto, and the Prince Auto is one of my favorite cigars ever. I was let down up front. I will tell you more in the mind. back half and see how I feel. Maybe it'll burn into more flavor, but for now, I hope so. I'm relatively unimpressed. So, we'll be back in a minute. And we're back for the back half. For the back half. Just put a little thing up like when it cuts away. Mm -hmm. Like actually stop it. But now for the back half. <laughs> I've been thinking about that because I haven't edited any of these videos yet. I think the first one's this week. Nice. So what does the back half has have for us in store? Well, uh, we always talk about terms in the back half. Uh, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge the greatness of Jimmy Russell and Wild Turkey Rare Breed. I know that has sir. nothing to do with cigars, but you, if anyone, is a gift from God to the world, sir. <laughs> if I had a hat, I'd take it off. <laughs> I did take my hat off. Hats off to you. I'm not drunk, I swear to God. I'm not God, I swear to drunk. <laughs> so... Um, let's talk first about <laughs> this cigar wrapper. It's an African Cameroon wrapper. Some of you may wonder what mean? that means. I don't. You don't wonder what that means? Oh, I thought you said some of you remember. No, we've never said what it was before. But please, continue. I have no idea what that <laughs> means. Tell me. Sorry, I got a ball bust in a little bit. Emphasis on the singular ball. Um... So, an African Cameroon wrapper. Cameroon is actually like a nation or region in Africa, like northwestern Africa, believe it or not. Near Egypt? That's no, northeastern. Good job. It's not America, I don't give a shit. Yeah, Americans aren't really good with African geography. We do decent with Europe and Asia, and even South America, but for some reason, my education is a little spotty on Africa. Now, that said, a lot of those countries have changed names in our lifetime. I remember specifically why we didn't cover it in uh, World Geography a whole lot because they change like once a week. Yeah. Because you get new countries once a week. <laughs> yeah. So, um, some characteristics of the Cameroon wrapper. It is particularly thin. That is first and foremost. I noticed. It is notoriously hard to wrap. It flaked where I pulled the band off because it just tore. Mind it. That is really common. Um, I believe you. you will almost never see these in a Maduro because it is difficult for them to just kind of be put into that configuration, I guess. Uh, because they're kind of weak. Most cheaper machine rolled cigars use a Cameroon wrapper. Really? Yes. Huh. Think Grenadier. Um, I don't know if Grenadier does specifically. Don't quote me on that. But the... Like Dutch Masters and Grenadiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's that's really what African Cameroon wrapper means. So, since that's not super interesting, I want to step further. It's aged for 30 years, so let's talk about how they age cigars. This is mind-blowing. Mind hmm? It's mind-blowing. They age a cigar for 30 years. It is. Age anything for 30 Even whiskey. 30-year-old whiskey. Some is. people don't make it that long. <laughs> Yeah. I can think of at least one person we went to high school with that uh, didn't live to be 30. Hmm. Well, anybody we went to high school with pretty much means that the oldest they're 30, so... Yeah. Again, if I had a hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Most cigar fillers and wrappers are aged at least two to five years. Uh, 
some manufacturers go a little further and they'll age their wrappers like 10 years. Just standard. Most of the time, if you're getting into a 10 year area, they're usually going to let you know. Um, like with bourbon. Yeah. They... They will do... Sorry, excuse me. They will do a couple of things. They will sometimes put them in like big bales if it's cheaper tobacco and it's going to be filler. Uh, and just like set that on a pallet and leave it in a warehouse somewhere to age. Sometimes they will put them in barrels. It's not particularly uncommon to have used alcohol barrels, which is why you get rum aged, bourbon barrel aged. I don't know if anybody's done scotch aged, but it's still basically a bourbon barrel probably. <laughs> uh, cigars, and in fact, I would bet most of them actually have already been used for some other purpose. Hopefully not fish. Uh, <laughs> God, that would suck. Wine? Wine would be good. Yep. Um, I'm really surprised. I haven't heard of more experimentation in that area. But there are a lot of cigar companies that do that lately. Especially as whiskeys kind of come up more in popularity in the last ten years or so. Um... Certainly has for us, but you know, ten years ago we definitely weren't drinking any whiskey because we weren't legally drinking age. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, high school was fun. All right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. So did mom. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. She bought it. No, Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> you just threw your mom under the bus for an actual crime on camera. Pretty sure the statute of limitations is up on that one. I hope so. If not, if uh, you arrest Jake's mom, there's a decent chance somebody might kick you in the nut. Uh, With a 308. Oh! <laughs> uh, when the alphabet boys get down your door and shoot your stuffed dog full of 174 pounds of tannerite. <laughs> he was a big dog. <laughs> uh, See, my dog filled with dog is 84 pounds. <laughs> my dog filled with dog. Jesus, I haven't even got into the back half of that cigar yet. <laughs> my God. Okay, go ahead. This is a cigar review video, I swear. Um... So, sometimes they'll age it in barrels. A lot of times, the most common way to age it, especially if it's going to be a wrapper, is they will put it in bundles, like you see with a lot of cigars that are aged after they're rolled. Mm -hmm. A lot of this motion. Um, For the back half? Yes. Uh, especially box press cigars are also often put like that so that they'll square out. They'll just be wrapped in like some kind of basically like cardboard wrapper type thing. And then just set on shelves in a warehouse somewhere to age. So hmm. not not unlike whiskey aging, really. Yeah, I did. Especially if they're aging them in barrels. It'd be probably fairly similar to aging a barrel of whiskey. Yeah, it really, really is. Um, and they don't... The barrel-aged cigars, it appears, they just toss the leaves in the barrels loosely. So those tend to end up being long filler cigars, it sounds like, from what I was reading on it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just pictured, like, a... Okay, we just rolled this hundred, these hundred cigars. Let's just shove them in this barrel. Yes. Yeah. Cigars. We'll just shake them around. I, I also thought they were aged as already rolled cigars, but most of them are not. Huh. A lot of them, the tobacco is aged beforehand. I guess would make it... It's easier to age a lot more for cigars, because let's say you're only going to age your wrapper, like this one. Mm -hmm. Then you just put a bunch of leaves wherever, and it's way easier to age for more cigars. And yeah. you can still put that age claim on your cigar, despite the fact that the filler and binder isn't. That shit was picked two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Probably takes longer. Usually to age two to five years for the other stuff. Repeat that for a minute. <laughs> Two to five years for the other stuff. 
Um, all right, so getting back to the Grey Cliff 30th. Or 30 year vintage, I should say. I'm really unimpressed with this for its age. Man, I am uh, exceedingly underwhelmed. See, when he first had this cigar, I got super excited to review it. I actually saved it to review it later. Because... He really liked the first one he had, and I did not at all. I literally smoked like a quarter of it, and I gave it away. I don't dislike it. It's just... See, now for me, most of the flavors are gone, and I have mm -hmm. hot air. Yeah. Smoking a Marlboro Light. Pretty much. Um, given the exceeding price point of this, I am... Severely underwhelmed. Yep. I would just smoke a grenadier if I was going to go for this kind of flavor. And I can get grenadiers for a dollar a pop. How much was this cigar? It cost me a little under ten bucks. If I were to go and buy this in a, uh, in a shop, how much would one of these cost? Closer to thirteen, fourteen. Closer to fourteen. So thirteen fifty? Mm hmm. I can go get a box of the, uh, what I've been smoking lately, the Talon, uh, original sweets, sweet originals, and, uh, Which are I can get away cigars. <laughs> they're technically cigars, they're cigarette-ish, cigarette adjacent, but I can go get a carton of those for the same price. I'd do that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna give this a three. I'm ready to get under most of the budget cigars we've reviewed. I'm trying to think of one I've had that... Okay, yeah, sure, three. I don't even know what to rate it. It's it's and a cigar. It's under a five. <laughs> yeah, it's a cigar. Um, I want to try some other Grey Cliff cigars just because they claim this luxury brand to give them the chance to prove me wrong. But if I had to judge this brand based on this cigar, I would never smoke another one. <laughs> you tried this before? Nope. Yeah, so, a three on this. I would pass, pretty much, on the uh, Grey Cliff. I think this might be the lowest cigar we've reviewed, besides the one that we threw out in the beginning of the review. <laughs> which still, which wasn't even really that bad of a cigar. It actually wasn't. We, uh, we mostly did it to troll the guy that gave it to us to review. It's one of the only reviews that we didn't give it on a shot. I think it's the only review we didn't give it on a shot. <laughs> This marble has more flavor. Yep. So, till we see you again, I'm Zach. I'm Jake. We are the Dirt Road Men. Hey everybody, if you like this video, uh, hit a like or dislike, comment, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And if you really like what we're doing, uh, check us out over on Facebook where we post every day.